It is time for This Week in Location-Based Marketing. This is episode number 49. This is what they call the late 40s. It's a number I'm not looking forward to. Today, October 30th, 2011, the day before Halloween, my name is Rob Woodbridge coming from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And with me as always... Asif Khan from the Location-Based Marketing Association. Headquartered, but not... Actually, headquartered there, but never in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Is that right? <laughs> Except for this week. This week. If you ever yeah. want to catch us, Eve, it's now, this week in Toronto. Um, uh, the uh, You can be found at thelbma.com or at the LBMA on Twitter or at CFARCON on Twitter. And, of course, you can find me at untether.tv or at Rob Woodbridge. Welcome, 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 Asif. Welcome back into the country. Yeah, they let you right. back, right? They keep they letting did. you back they in. Did. Yeah. Do they, uh, do they ever ask you if you, uh, I mean, do you ever think about getting, like, a, a green card for the amount of time you spend in the U.S.? Uh, I haven't, but you know what I thought about? I've been watching this Pan Am show. Have you seen that? Well, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm thinking maybe maybe the CIA could use me now. No, <laughs> that's right. It's an operative. <laughs> nice. I haven't watched the show, but um, yeah, who has time for yeah. television these days, man? Right. I'm so absorbed. But now that the World Series is over, in fact, over, um, I actually have my nights back now, which is uh, something I I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the uh, night before Halloween, and we don't have a single thing about Halloween in here. This is what I love, because oh. it uh, there's nothing really relevant, except for go out and support uh, UNICEF and uh, go get as much candy as possible. F before we get into this, our, our agenda, which has uh, a whole bunch of, um, obviously, uh, news from the New York Marathon, Google Offers, uh, Geocast and their Shopperazzi uh, application. Um, so a great story about factual Great products, two funding, two, some acquisitions and some funding news, as well yeah. as our product of the week. Um, talk about your week, Asif, because it was jammed. Yeah, my week was really busy. I uh, spent the first part of it uh, in Chicago at the um, Fast Casual uh, Restaurant Conference, uh, obviously trying to, uh, you know, uh, bring location-based marketing to uh, to that segment uh, of the industry and kind of uh, get get some of these restaurant owners to understand, you know, what they could be doing to be bringing people into their businesses, be contributing to their local communities. Uh, and and doing that via you know geo uh, based technology so so that was a good uh, a good event good discussions. Just out of uh, curiosity, before you move to the next, I mean, was it yeah. um, what was the uh, sense that you got from the state of readiness for uh, for these restaurants? I, I think there's willingness. I think they're just they. Uh, I think for the most part, this is this was kind of tier two, tier three of the restaurant industry. So. Um, I, I think for the most part, you know, they're downstream a little bit. They're not playing at the same level as kind of, you know, the McDonald's or Subways of the world. And, um, you know, so, so there's willingness, there's interest. Uh, they're just not, you know, quite there yet in terms of ready to allocate, you know, dollars and go and actually do. Uh, some are. Um, you know, some are doing things already. Um, but uh, I think there's there's more work to be done. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we haven't seen much from these guys uh but it's, were you surprised at how many tier two and tier three uh, restaurants there were with you know more than one location? No, pretty, no, it, it, but it's no. pretty staggering when you come up. We're pretty limited in Canada compared to what the U.S. has. Yeah, oh yeah, there's tons, there's tons. So it was from Chicago, then uh, back in time to New York City, right? Back in time to New York, uh, caught uh, day two of the uh, Street Fight Conference, which was uh, phenomenal. A great job for a first conference, I gotta say uh, that uh, those guys put on. Um, you know, really, really high quality speakers and uh, and attendees as well. Um, you know, so good on them. Great. Um, you know, great event. And then I kind of moved from there. The LBMA, we had our own event in the evening uh, on um, on Wednesday in New York, focused on retail. So we had a panel with Tasty Delight and Macy's and, and JetBlue uh, Airlines, and uh, really good discussion with the uh, the attendees there as well. And 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 uh, you know, I was quite I was quite pleased with it. So uh, looking forward to doing more there. And uh, yeah, then Jet set it back to Toronto and uh, spoke on Friday at a conference uh, here in Toronto uh, that's part of the TIFF uh, Film Festival group called TIFF Nexus, and uh, we had something called Locative Media Day and. Uh, that was also really great because it was uh, kind of pulled together the lo local academic community, hardware and software design uh, students and crew, gaming uh, community, um, you know, and just kind of bringing it all together and then also trying to figure out how to actually make money from location, which is, you know, one of the parts I was talking about, um, you know, on one of the panels. So anyways, it was uh, all in all a, a great week. What a novel concept about making money in this industry, right? <laughs> yeah. 
But, you know, it's got to start somewhere. And uh, the ideas are what makes it flow. The, hopefully what that means is that cash comes. And uh, certainly for some of the companies that we're going to be talking about today in some of the news, um, it, 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 uh, it looks that way. Some of these guys have got some great ideas. Others, not so much. But uh, what a busy week. Asif, I don't know how you do it. Three different locations, three different cities in five days. And, yeah. Yeah, but I get to be home for a whole week now. So there you whole go. whole week. A whole week, yeah. Anyways. Well, that's great. Well, let's jump right into this because uh, we do have a lot to cover. We have a limited amount of time. Um, so we're going to cruise through the uh, stories um, until until we hit a snag. And, and uh, there's one story in here that I'm sure that will, that will um, engross us in debate or good conversation. But let's jump into this. The first story that we're looking at is uh, Will Dot Lobs. Wool Wool dot Labs launching this spot, um, and uh, this was supposed to have happened uh, a couple of days ago, but I, I'm not sure if it has or not. However, they're going to launch this at Occupy Wall Street. Well, let's talk about this. Yeah, it was supposed to launch on Friday during uh, you know while Occupy Wall Street was going on, and so the the idea of of, of this spot is really all, not all that new it's it you know it kind of you know piggybacks on what we've seen from guys like you know broadcaster or murmur here in toronto um you know the idea of you know leaving a story or a message you know tied to a physical place in this yeah. case it's called this spot and so uh the, they have a concept what they call spot mark you can create a community around an event place an item there uh people can come and discover you know this content that's been left and attached to that spot um so you know i think the only thing that's interesting about this is is that you know they've got these people basically squatting on you know property and you know around wall street you know because of the the occupy wall street uh, initiative and uh so they thought hey let, let's piggyback on this as a way to launch this product and uh let these people tell their stories you know through this platform um i don't know it, first of all we don't even know if it happened because when you go to their website there's nothing there it's asking you to join the beta so no. I, don't, I don't know how you actually participated in this if you were at occupy wall street but uh you know the concept is solid and yep. I, so, so i'll give them that i think you know and i said we've seen this from other players um, and I think there's huge value, and I think using location to share content as opposed to just pushing deals is something I'm I'm very positive on. Um, but you know, it's sort of like another Me Too, and you know, did it happen? Did it not happen? I don't know. Opportunistic for sure, right? With Occupy Wall Street, but uh, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of what Broadcaster is doing because I love the the concept of curated yeah. content, location based curated content, where you can be walking down the street and uh, headphones in location-based app running and hear the stories as you're walking down the street. And yeah. I think that that's, you know, it's a sequence of stories, which is great. And I keep equating this to, wouldn't it be great if I could tell my life story? It's not very interesting to you, but it would be interesting to my kids, right? So right. significant spots and significant moments where later on in their lives, when they arrive there, they can say, hey, look, this is a curated spot by your father. Uh, listen to what he has to say about this and what it meant to him at that time. And I think that that is very, oh, it's, very it's powerful. It's amazing. Yeah. The power of what you can do with that, I think, is is invaluable. It's just, uh, yeah, do we have to piggyback on Occupy Wall Street? I don't know. Exactly. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of solidifies it as a, you know, as a political piece. And they were talking about it in the press release about using this in a political way to kind of gauge yeah. Uh, you know, um, insight into the the voter. I don't I don't get that as much, but um, I I think I'd like to talk to these guys uh, a little bit more about it. And see, well, I mean, see I mean that that is where they come from. So yeah. that, so they have that legitimate heritage or pedigree. We could call that. I mean, they're they're business kind of bi intelligence company, yep. social science kind of background. So okay, I get it. You know. <laughs> targeting the political arena so let's try this and, and as a way to kind of get a little buzz around what we're doing okay fine yep huge um, huge, huge revenue opportunities if this is done right if this yeah, is a mass appeal um sure so uh, yeah go check it out at the spot.com if it's if it's live as of right now which is afternoon on the 30th of october it's not live yet so uh interested to see and if you guys anybody from world labs is listening to this or watching this reach out to us we'd love to hear how it went with uh yeah. with uh we'd love to try it out yeah boy would we ever don't worry, I can talk. Right, Asif? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we, have, we have many stories we can leave that are tied to physical locations. Exactly. Just except for what happens in Vegas. We don't we don't we don't we don't track that. There's like a there's gotta be some kind of uh, force field around Vegas, right? Nothing right. gets out there. But when you get into Vegas, all the stories are told. Right? Mm -hmm. You can't access them exactly. from outside of Vegas. Exactly. Geofence the, the reverse geofence. Yeah. All right, so the second story. 
uh, Google uh, becoming really an aggregator for uh, uh, other deal offers, uh, loca not location-based, but uh, group buying deals. Um, this is an interesting yep. play. I, I think this is more in line with what Google should be doing than what Google is doing with uh, with their own offers. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, it, you know, m my only caveat to it is, is is that you know this is exactly the same as what Yahoo did with their Yahoo local offers, right? Mm -hmm. I mean. They went and did all the deals with Home Run and Living Social and everybody else, and said, you know, okay, we're we're going to be the deal aggregator. And you know, since we talked about that story a while, a few months back, I haven't heard anything about Yahoo local offers. Have you? Nope. So, you know, I I don't have much hope that this is going to be any more successful. I think it's a better. I agree with you. I think it's a better fit for Google yeah. than yeah. going out and doing their own deals. Um, I, I just don't know how this plays out though in terms of the consumer. Well, yeah, and, and they don't have Groupon or Living Social involved uh, in right. this one, but that doesn't mean that they're that they that they're it's not going to work. But you know, the, I think that Google's come under a lot of scrutiny these days when when their products seem to rise to the top somehow uh, when you do a search. Uh, so during the results, their deals would come up top, or their products right. would come up ahead of everything else. So um, it's a conflict, right? When you're a search engine and you're and you, whether you are or not, but you're bumping your own products, which I think is is legitimate. You can do that. You know, I don't have an issue with that. Google is a for-profit corporation. They might have the they are, they are a monopoly, but um, that's a different issue. But I think that this, when you aggregate other deals, it's much more in line with Google's business model than anything else. It's turning content into revenue, not generating the content. So yeah, yeah. So but, anyways, I mean, we'll, we'll I'll reserve judgment on this one because you know if. if if it goes the same way that the Yahoo one did, then you know it's it's not going to happen. The only difference here is, what, or at least what they're claiming is, you know, they don't have Living Social or Groupon. They're claiming that the companies that they've partnered with are are very local to a specific right. community, and so if you're part of that community, you know, you're going to see those deals surface, kind of thing. Some of some of their right. names are are, are, uh, are incredible, <laughs> like Doodle Deals. Um, we know about Guild City. Juice in the city. Juice in the city. What does that? What is that? And, and how about that KGB deals, right? And, yeah. And Mamapedia yeah. and Plum District and uh, what's the other one? Yeah. Uh, Schwaggle and Zozy. Zozy. I like I like that Schwaggle. Schwaggle and Zozy. But uh, the other thing that they're doing here as well, I know it's that's the problem. Is Untether is too pedestrian. LBMA is too pedestrian. We got to come up with. I think Schwaggle is what you should change the LBMA. To. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But Google is way, also it's only available in San Francisco at the moment. Right, and Google is also allowing uh, it, not only that they're allowing you to pay uh, through their this service, right? So you um, you can actually buy the Groupon or the the group deal through Google uh, checkout, and uh, and they'll pay obviously the uh, the the group uh, buying and soon provider. through Google Wallet. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. So that's right. uh, Google. Uh, Google is uh, tweaking the offers to include their offers as well. They're not stopping that, but also to incorporate nope. other dealers uh, into this into their search engine, which I think much more in line with their business model. Yeah. All right. Especially if they start targeting the merchants from the other offers, and they just say, "Look, hey, we can do that for you at uh, about two percent less." Exactly. Well, you know what? You yeah. always worry about some like, <laughs> like you. You have to worry about it because. Google accumulates all this information, understands where the hot commodities are and where they yep. should be, and looks at the analytics and says, "Okay, now we're going to launch a product into that business." So, right. you know, there's that that adage where you you know uh, keep your enemies closer, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, Google Google knows a lot about everybody, and uh, this they is just a little more. But I think it's to fight Facebook. We and we could probably talk about this forever. Right. All right. Third story. If you have any thoughts on this, let us know. If if you've uh, if you've got any insight into uh, why Google offers is good or bad, let us know. Untethergmail.com or asif at the LBMA .com. Yep. Uh, third story. New York Marathon uh, is uh, expanding map my, map my run, which um, I was staggered when I was researching this for this. Was that last year people paid uh, twenty five thousand or so people just for the New York Marathon spectators. Yep. Twenty five thousand people have spent four dollars on an app just for the New York Marathon. No, I mean, and you got to remember, this is the biggest marathon in the world, right? I mean, um, you know, yep. you, you, yeah. So I mean, Sky it covers, yeah, two and a half million spectators. Yeah, right. So I mean, this this is this is pretty serious business, and there's a lot of um, sponsorship and advertising dollars, and and a lot of money that circles around this particular event. And so this 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 mobile app, it's called Map My Run. Um, 
they had it last year. Um, so they're adding a whole bunch of features to it uh, for this year's race. And so, you know, some of the things that you can do with this is, 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 for example, if you're a friend or family member of one of the runners, you can push them, you know, push uh, messages out, you know, to encourage them along the way. You know, I mean, one thing you need one, one, more. one of the beauties of New York Marathon is they're very technology forward thinking. Um, yep. And, you know, I know, for example, last year in the shoes, the, as the, the runners were wearing, they had RFID tags that were connected to digital screens, um, you know, along the route. And so basically as you uh, stepped and passed a certain point, uh, the tag triggered, and, and then those same text messages that were coming through the app were then displayed to you on a giant screen, you know, as you're running in front of you, you know, so you see friends and family and photos and faces, you know, encouraging you to keep going, keep going, because, you know, it's uh, it's hard, you know, to run a marathon. I just want to know if you can virtually, if there's like one button, flip the bird, right? Like, uh, you know, it's like, stop, leave me alone, right? Or, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the interesting thing about it this year or some of the new features that they're adding this year is, is one, one of our members at the LBMA is a company called Lemon uh, LLC out of New York. And so these guys are have kind of a geofencing SMS platform that they OEM into into other apps, including this one. So they're building or they've built uh, for, for the upcoming uh, launch here. A, the find my friend feature, the geofencing capabilities, you know, the, the ability to push deals, but inside of those geofences, so that's all built uh, on top of the the pre-existing app by by Lemon. So uh, so they're adding a ton of location elements to it this year. I, I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's great. I, I mean, I'm staggered um, by the fact that this is something that they're expecting a uh, hundred hundred thousand people to uh, to download. Um, now there are there's a free version, but the, the enhanced version is two ninety nine, and yeah. uh, it has a whole bunch of things like you can follow ten runners. You, yeah. you know, you get live uh, video feed from the from the um, or timer feed from the uh, you know from the start and the finish, and um, but they they expect a hundred thousand people to engage with this application during this one event, which is pretty unbelievable, um, and it's just it's it's a massive undertaking for a single event uh, of this size, even if there are two and a half million spectators. It's uh, it's pretty right. big. And I love the tie-in. Everybody's got to have a coupon or a tie-in to. I think it's Subway that they're doing it, and somebody else that yes, they're. Yes, that's right. Yeah. They're tying it into deals, location-based yeah. or location-based yeah, deals. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's it's you know they're not messing around here. This is um this is big business for these guys. Wow. So I mean I think so it's Map My Run, and I guess you can get it. The 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 marathon's November fifth, so I'm going to assume you can get it right now. Yep. And I haven't. Me neither. And you know what? I don't often, um, I don't r watch marathons. I think that just fills me with too much guilt. I just watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. All right. So uh, from the very interesting to the not not so interesting, but still relevant. Yeah, we talked about scrapping the story, but it's still relevant because um, it allows us to, to vent about uh, the innovation or the lack of innovation in the industry, <laughs> which is uh, Geocast launching uh, this uh, application called uh, Shopperazzi. Yeah, um, like we need a reason to vent. I know, but you know what? Every once in a while, this comes across, and they try to position it in a way that is, this is this is so insanely unique. But it's really, uh, there are some unique pieces to this, but um, but not so innovative. So Geocast launching Shopperazzi. Yeah. So apparently, what this is, okay, and I'm, I, and I'm, I'm literally going to read read how they describe it because 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 I find it so hilarious. Okay, an iPhone app that allows you to track your favorite shops and brands and see when they're discounted in your area. It also has a website, draws on a database of store locations and websites, and then basically pull, pulls deals from them. So, you know, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get what's interesting or new about this. So I've got my brands that I follow is, is, is how I summarize this. So, you know, I'm a big fan of The Gap. Okay, great. Um, so you're going to... What? Let me know when there's something going on at the Gap. Don't I get that already in an email that I'm probably already subscribed to, or don't I get it already through some other location app that I already have access to? Or I, I mean, what what new value are you bringing here? Nothing like nothing at all, as far as I can tell. And and uh, my, my my favorite thing is the quote. This uh, this is from Bashar, uh, Bashir Muhammad, who is the um, uh, he owns. Um, uh, this company called American Pie. Uh, it's an urban clothing specialist. Yeah. And uh, he says, people don't want to download an app for every store or label they like. Shopperazzi includes all of these uh, into one. And, and uh, you know, 
what we've heard and what you've heard and what I've heard specifically from this industry is that, listen, we don't want to split our brand. We want to own our brand. So all of the large uh, retailers, the high-end retailers are looking at this and saying, yeah. we want to own that customer. We don't want a third party, inter in somebody in intervening with our customer. Right. So this goes against everything that, that we've been hearing. It does. It does. I, I mean... You know, and I'll even say, like, even even here in in Toronto, we we have you know Shopcatch, which is one of the uh, the apps uh, through the Torstar group. Um, so they got Wagjag for kind of the daily deal stuff, and then they've got Shopcatch, which is exactly this. I yep. mean, this is it's an app that's targeted at malls uh, and all the retailers that exist in those malls, and basically it surfaces you know whatever the deals or specials are that are coming out of their existing flyers and everything else, and just puts it all in one place. Yeah. So. I see the value of that, and you know, so I guess Shoparazzi does that. Um, but you know, even within Shopcatch, those same retailers can then you know put exclusive deals in that are only available through the app and do other things. I mean, I don't see any of that here. No. I, so I, I don't know. I don't know. It pulls uh, it from all the email emails that go out. It's it's hand curated. It's it's high uh, high maintenance. Um, and if it's hand curated, that means there's a delay, right? So. Um, it's one of those things that uh, I, uh, yeah, they got to do more. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, anyways, boom. But I wish there was a gong. We should it's have a gong. It's called and it's from a company called Geocast. Geocast Shaparazzi. Yeah. I had a gong. So let's talk about the last story that we've got, which is uh, I love this um, company called Factual, uh, yeah. building this, uh, launching Resol their Resolve API. Man, yeah. I love this. So should you if you're in this business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we one of the big challenges we have in this in this uh, ever uh, changing and evolving, fast moving world of, of location is is data. Um, you know, and and there's a lot of data. We we call it big data, um, and a lot of the data is inaccurate, incomplete, uh, missing information. Um, you know, you open a restaurant, you list it in you know Yellow Pages, you list it in Google and Foursquare and seventeen thousand places. Um, and then you go out of business two years later, and whose responsibility is it to remove all that data? You know, from from Google, is it you as a guy who just went out of business? Probably not. You're not really motivated to do that. You know, so, so there's a lot of a lot of issues. And so this Resolve API really is about you know kind of resol resolving you know these kind of discrepancies in the data. And so I don't know. I, what are your thoughts, Rob? I I, I love this. Like uh, you know, so the the idea is that. Uh, you know, if you're a part of this location world and you've got an application or something that requires a little bit of data, you send you, you through Resolve and using their API, you, you send a little bit of piece of the information, like you know maybe an address or a postal code or whatever it is, a company name, and then through the Resolve API, it pulls that information, it fills out the rest of that information, normalizing right. the data, which is one of these things that, as you said, is so important. Uh, up to up to date data is uh, is the most important thing, especially when you're building a location-aware yeah. application. So, so I, I yeah. love that. And I love it too. I think it, 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 it helps you know, on the completeness of the data aspect. It doesn't necessarily uh, mean that the data is accurate per se, um, yeah. but, but it certainly you know, kind of helps to complete the picture. Um, you know, and, and I say that because you know, accuracy is, a bit, is also equally a big issue here. And, and so guys like, for example, Locationary, which is another player in this space, you know, are, are really focused on the accuracy piece. Um, you know, where they actually have set up you know consumer-based game mechanics uh, right. models, where they incent the consumer public to go out and verify whether this data record is accurate. And if you find right. issues in it, then you can actually correct it, and you get you know a micro payment credit in your account. And if somebody else finds out that what you put in there is inaccurate, your you know your your uh, uh, account goes down, there it goes up, and so there's this kind of gaming mechanics to ensure accuracy all the time. Yeah. Um, and so you know when we look at the data, we got to look at completeness um, of the data as well as accuracy. I think both are are important. Well, I, I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And one of the great comments that I saw on TechCrunch around this article was um, was uh, by Brock Cusick, um, who was saying that there that this is what Google should be doing. Right, and uh, I totally agree with this. Is that uh, if Google ever turned their focus into this area because of all of the location data that they've currently yeah. had, they've got, um, this would be something of, of great significance. But we know that as of I think it's November first or December first, uh, Google is um, now going to start charging for use of the Maps API. 
Did you hear about this? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did hear about that. Yeah. So yeah. staggering. Uh, so obviously for smaller sites that do, I think, less than twenty-five or 50,000 uh, map views a day or something like that, it, it's not significant. But for sites that are using this, like big sites like CNN and MSN and all, all these other, not MSN, but you know what I'm saying, like big, big, big media companies that are using the Maps API, um, this is going to be all of a sudden a very expensive play. And what right. I, Google has always reserved the right to do this. And I've always thought, man, they could screw a lot of people. This is the challenge of being in an open API world when somebody decides, you know what? Yeah, we're out of beta. Turn on the revenue switch. Right. And everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. built on the Google Maps API. So Google, all of a sudden, uh, you know, it has this data. It's normalized. It's ready to go. And if they turn their attention to something like this, I think that this is really where they should be playing. Um, and they should charge for this, not for the Maps API. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I, I think there's a, a lot more value in, well, let me put it to you this way. So so, so I think our view at the LBMA on this is, is, is really that, um, you know, business listing information, you know, accurate and complete should be free, freely distributed. Right. Um, so I, I don't necessarily see the value in, in charging for that. I think what you should be charging for is, is any other uh, higher level data that exists on top of that um, basic location uh, layer. So in other words, you know, who's been going there, who's been checking in, uh, with what friends, social magnification that happened uh, at that location, you know, all the other stuff that comes out of, you know, Foursquare and everywhere else, um, that's the data that I think is is the data you, you should be actually making money from. Well, it is. And, and uh, yeah, and just to kind of follow up that is that uh, what I'm getting is that uh, Google uh, Maps API is now going to cost $4 for every 1,000 requests. Okay. And uh, so it basically says that the first 25,000 map loads a day are free. Right. And then um, an example, uh, an app uh, using the JavaScript Maps API for mobile and uh, and clocking, basically bringing in 100,000 users will now have to pay $300 a day for something like that. So, it, right. I mean, it's pretty staggering, um, but you know what? It It's theirs. Right? Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't argue with this. No, 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 no. I'm not arguing it, but uh, I'm just I don't saying like it. that's my, my view on kind of where the money should be made on the data side. I, 100%. And you so, know what? Uh, I think when we talk about the Forbes article about uh, location intelligence, I think that that's, that's really where where it should right. be made, right? And that's that's what you're saying. So. But uh, so factual ads, this resolve API, and we we'll just slash this on the end, um, which is that Google is now going to be charging uh, for their uh, Google Maps API. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's a big announcement. So that's it. Wool.labs Labs launching the spot. Google offers becoming an aggregator as well as they have their own deals. Uh, uh, Google offers site as well. The marathon expecting some massive numbers for Map My Run expanding their expanding the functions and features of this uh, of this application. Uh, Geocast uh, launches Shopperant and uh, Factual Ads resolve the, the Resolve API, and uh, Google is now charging for the uh, Google Maps API. Um, wow, big week! Big week! Big week! So now let's flip it over to the funding side, and um, th uh, this was yeah. a, this is a bold move. Uh, Location Labs picking up uh, two companies that I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I think this is. Um... You know, we talked about Location Labs sort of indirectly a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the launch of iOS 5. Yep. And, and we talked about, you know, one of the key things in iOS 5 is this, um, you know, kind of built-in location uh, feature where you can, you know, kind of find your family and friends and track, you know, uh, people that you want to, that give you permission to track them. Um, and obviously, Locations Labs, you know, business is, is built on their primary product called Safely, which is exactly that. It's a product for, you know, tracking family and friends um, and knowing where your teenagers are and all that kind of stuff, along with some, you know, emergency 911 kind of uh, pieces as well. And 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 we and we kind of said, well, if anyone should be threatened by uh, the launch of iOS five, it should be those guys, because. They license their product primarily, you know, through the carriers. Right. Um, and, and so, this announcement this week, to me, is actually a response to that um, to that threat. I mean, basically, what they're saying is, look, you know, we've got to go and get customers as fast as possible. We got to, you know, build this base, you know, as quickly as we can. Um, and both of these companies, Workle uh, and, and Volley. Uh, do that. I mean, uh, both have millions of, uh, well, I mean, in the case of Workle, they, they've got millions of users on the system. 
Um, and so they've got uh, two products, one called Office Drop, one called Video Surf. Um, and, and so these, these are all profitable you know, uh, companies and products, iPhone and Android. Uh, Volley is a group messaging platform uh, that uh, a lot of families have been using uh, to, to connect. So I, I think this is, this is about locking and loading on uh, you know, building a, a customer base as fast as, as you can. I like I like this uh, the concept of this simply because um, we know that this is a user play and uh, they're pretty open about this. But I, I, you know, uh, growing organically can only take you so far. Right now, mm-hmm. you've got to start to you've got to round out what your service offering is, and you've got to differentiate yourself from from some of the existing competitors. So you can do that one of two ways: you can you can go out and build uh, cool products. Stuff that is pushing or leading the edge and uh, and paving the way, which is always a tough thing because not a lot of it can be protected today, because yeah. you know I'm sure that you can put a patent around it, but by that time that technology will have passed, right? Like the check in or something like that. Yeah. So you can do that, which is a which is a good move, and you should be doing that as well. But the other p- thing is to solidify your your spot in this world, is to wrap yourself around a whole lot of users, right? Yeah, no question. I, I mean, and, and I, was, I wasn't ever really worried about Location Labs. I mean, Tasso is no. a, a super smart guy over there, the CEO, and you knew he was going to do something. It's, it's just what? And, and I don't think he's done. I think this is, you know, the first in a series of uh, moves to uh, kind of solidify their position and, and, and grow base here. Well, you know, um, what? Uh, on the Apple side, though, um, so it's been out a month now, three weeks, I think, iOS 5, yeah. maybe a month. Uh, and even the 4S has been out for about two and a half weeks or so. And uh, so I've tried, man, I've tried to use the location services. I've tried to use the cloud services. It is a total disaster. It's a nightmare. It's terrible to set up. It's not usable. It's highly in- unconfigurable if you have an existing right. um, um, iTunes account. It is a nightmare. So this is opportunity for these. Well, well, Apple's trying to refine this and figure this all out. Yep. This, is, this is a massive opportunity to, to stay with a service that uh, that actually works. And and so you hope that, that people who may have jumped over saying, look, I'm going to take a look at Apple, uh, the iOS 5 version of this, will now mm-hmm. kind of flip back and say, look, uh, you know what? This is easy. I've already got this up and running. So right. switching the switching cost has been is very high right now because Apple has done a... Uh, disservice to it. It's not a great. Uh, it's not intuitive. It's not very Apple like, shall we say? No. Nope. I still can't do my photo streaming. Uh, and no, it's. It, I agree. I've had some issues as well. Oh so. my god! I've given up. Dropbox, <laughs> here I come. Or Box.net, right. here I come. So, and anyways, uh, Location Labs uh, gets uh, Workle and Volley. That's a big good. No, 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 no terms, right? You just. No, no. There was no numbers. Yeah. I didn't see any numbers. So. Okay. So uh, the one deal that we're going to talk uh, briefly about is uh, is Affle, which is a Singapore company raising some boku de cashola. Yeah, yeah. So they raised ten million uh, from uh, D two C, which is a fund uh, based there. Um, and so these guys are, you know, a going concern. I mean, they uh, they're interesting because I think they're. Um, you know, they, they, they describe themselves as a hybrid between a media owner and a media exchange uh, in the mobile space, and so, you know, they're um, you know they're they're looking big. This this money for them is about how do they get into uh, the rest of uh, the Asian market, China and Japan, and and, and some of those other big markets. Um, but basically, uh, you know, they've got a messenger piece. They've got a, a kind of a publishing uh, piece uh, to this. They've got mobile coupons in in, in the platform. So this is kind of like the be all end all kind of content and uh, an exchange platform and, and and if you're an advertiser obviously there's there's that piece of it as well in terms of you know the kind of the back end system for managing and pushing content so um, interesting um, I obviously I'm not in Singapore I haven't had a chance to play with it so um, but uh, 10 million bucks big money it is it is well I take a little bit of that just a small yeah. small amount I think 50 grand 50 grand 60 grand okay 100 grand <laughs> so uh, Location Labs uh, buying uh, Workle and Volley out. Uh, no, it's it's Affle, probably not pronouncing that right. Uh, out of Singapore, closing ten million dollars. Yeah. So those, those are the two significant things that have happened this week. Smaller deals, of course, um, but fewer and far between. Uh, I think that uh, we're starting to see a little bit of a of um, of a normalization in the activity when it comes to funding. What right. about product, man? Product of yeah, the week. So the pro- Saving Product Star. of the week is, is something called Saving Star, um, and uh, so this is a, another um, couponing uh, type service. The difference here is, is that, that this isn't actually, um, you know, location yet. 
um, it, it's but it's big, um, and so it, it has some pretty interesting scale. So they've got uh, partnerships in the U.S. with Kroger and CVS and Rite Aid and a whole bunch of people. And so basically, it's it's an e-couponing service. Uh, you know, taking all the kind of paper coupons that you would normally get from from all these people in their flyers and and kind of digitizing them, uh, you know, so the consumer doesn't have anything to clip. Pretty pretty standard, pretty easy model. Um, you know, all delivered to you through this mobile app. Um, and the the key to this concept called Saving Star is when the con consumer kind of um, uses this, you know, as they're kind of uh, doing deals and, and kind of getting uh, content, they're basically, every time they redeem something, they get a little bit of a credit in their account. So it's kind of got a little bit of a level up uh, yeah. feel to it. Yeah. Um, and so when you reach $5 in your Saving Star account, then you can you can choose to kind of, re you know, cash that out and, and use your five bucks uh, or deposit it into a PayPal account, which is kind of interesting, or, or redeem it in the form of an Amazon gift cards or, or donate it to a charity or do a bunch of things. So there's a lot of interesting elements here, um, and I think it'll be even more interesting once they actually add the you know location piece to it. But I think you know they've already got a pretty big user base because you know people you know know where they shop as far as a Rite Aid or a CVS or a Kroger is concerned. Like you're not going around looking for Kroger's everywhere you go. You've got your regular Kroger in your neighborhood, I assume, and so you're just you just want to kind of aggregate, pull all the uh, coupons together that are relevant to you when you're in your Kroger. So, you know what's crazy is that they're talking about uh, it's re these uh, these e, e, e coupons are redeemable at over twenty four thousand locations across the states. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, when I see numbers like that, it's like that's a great base to be able to develop from. Boy, twenty four thousand locations. Sure. For sure. I'd be interested to know um, activity, so how many people are actually using it, but uh, 24, yeah. at least locations, it's pervasive, um, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. All so right. I, I, want, I wonder how the uh, – you, you ever seen those TV shows on the extreme couponing? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they use Saving Star. Well, exactly. We, You know what? we got to follow somebody around who's actually been doing this, um, who, who's been – is there a documentary around somebody who's actually just used like lived on Groupon or lived on Living Social or something you know lived on Saving Star? You can only buy uh, something. I haven't that's... seen that yet, but I but I know I know Foursquare's working on a TV show right now. Yeah, uh, well, they've been working know, on that for a year since yeah, episode yeah, one. I, yeah, I haven't seen anything about it since. So, well, exactly. I think it would be interesting to see that. All right, so that's uh, Saving Star. If you go to SavingStar.com, you can go and check it out. And you can see what they offer. If you're in the States, even better, uh, you can sign up and um, and start to redeem or get these e-coupons, build up the loyalty, and uh, and start saving your cash or spending yep. it all at the Kroger's and 24,000 other locations across the States. There you go. Saving Star. All right, now this is uh, this is our resource of the week. I, this is an article on Forbes. Um about location intelligence, and so this is like a Bible. This was written like a Bible to me. This is, uh, I loved reading this because um, because of my view on analytics and uh, and getting a big picture of what it is that I'm spending money on around location. Yeah, it's absolutely one of the best articles I've ever read um, in terms of you know helping people understand what location intelligence is first of all. So, Steve Milton, you know, if you're out there listening <laughs> to this, we love yeah, it. Love it. Love it, and, you know, and 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 so, you know, I, I think it's one of those things. You know, for if you've been in the technology space for a while, you understand what business intelligence is. Um, but location intelligence is is you know is, is a very particular thing, and 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 it's, you know, we hear a lot when we talk about location based marketing about the platforms and the Groupons and the deals and the you know all that stuff, and that's all interesting. But if you're a business, if you're a merchant, and you're you know. Dunkin' Donuts, and you're trying to figure out where should I open my next five locations, you know, at the end of the day, you need intelligence. You need to look at data. You need to analyze that data. And that in increasingly, that data is not just about, you know, buying patterns and trends and, you know, uh, real estate prices and taxes and all that other stuff that's important. But it's also about, you know, location. It's always been about location, location, location. But today, in today's world, location is not is about the physical location as much as it is about the data of yeah. what's going on around that location yeah. and what's happening at that location, and who's checking in at those locations and all the other stuff that comes with it. And so, the, you know, this article, you know, does a fantastic job of helping people understand 
what location intelligence is. And several of our members, guys like DMTI, Spatial, yeah. um, you know, and uh, and I and others, um, you know, are play in this space of of helping businesses understand, you know, and, and use data. Whether you're in the insurance industry, uh, you know, or you're in the retail industry, or you're, you know, a bank, what have you. I think I think there's a lot of value in location data. Boy, is it ever! And and DMTI Spatial is a perfect example of a company that's looking at, for example. Um, uh, for insurance purposes, right? Do you think about, um, you know, how many times that location has been impacted by something like an earthquake? That's a simple one. Mm-hmm. But a flood, um, you know, is it below or above the the water line or the fault line? How many times has has something had, you know, how many times has the street been dug up in front of it? Is it going to impact business? You know, is it, how old? How old are the pipes? Like all of these kind of things is yeah, all yeah. the data that they put together to make an assessment on something that you should know. Boy, would it ever be great to, to when you're deciding about where your retail location is, to understand what the total cost of being there is going to be and the impact of some of the construction or whatever. Um, but that's what this stuff, that's what location analytics, oh, it just makes me, I love this kind of stuff. I love yeah, this no, kind it, of stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic. It really is. And so if, if you haven't read it, and even if you're not, you know, in in the data business, um, and it's, it's it, and you don't you think it's not relevant to you, just read the article so you understand what's going <laughs> so on. So you have it. So, so you have it. I mean, it really is that good. So, anyways, but it's going to explain. Forbes. But it's going to explain why the, the the location next to you. You can be right next to you. You know, you know, you're 101, and the person next to you is 103 on Main Street, and it'll explain why you're you're paying more or less insurance. You know, yeah. and that's how targeted and tailored it's going to be. Or tax rates are different, or whatever. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's coming. So read it. So, anyways, Forbes.com, uh, location intelligence, the future looks bright. Yeah. Well, we'll have a link right up here. But if yeah. you're listening to this, um, just go to Forbes.com. Look up Steve Milton, S-T-E-V-E, Steve, Milton, M-I-L-T-O-N. Uh, and he's the author. This was done on the 11th of October. So um, go, and, go and take a read. All right. Man, can you believe next week is episode number 50? I know. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do something special. Episode number 50. I'm not going to say what it is yet, but we're going to do something special. We are going to do something exceptionally special. Yeah. Really, really, really special. Boy, we got to figure it out. we got a week to figure it out to see. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm around all week, see? So I That's right. That. And we're going to put our heads together and we're going to figure this We're going to figure yeah. this thing out. All right. Um, for those of you who are still here watching, listening, wherever you may be, we really appreciate the fact that you do this, but we would love some more feedback. And uh, if you could, just send us a note, send us a tweet, do whatever you want to do, send us a DM, I don't care. Reach out and let us know how we're doing. Uh, we, we, uh, we've done this for 49 episodes. We're cresting 50. We're about we're three weeks away from our first a- anniversary of doing this. Um, we'd really love to know, uh, get some feedback from you guys. Really appreciate the, those that have given, to, uh, given it to us already. You can reach me at untether at gmail.com. You can reach Asif at asif at the LVMA.com. Don't hesitate to reach out and offer some thoughts, comments, suggestions. No, we love it. Yeah. But until then, Asif, we'll see you next week for episode number 50, man. Absolutely. Have a good one. Have a good week, everybody. All right.